What is going up all you tech fans? Jay here bringing us some um, discussion here on something that I'm asked about quite often. Some of you are graduating high school, graduating college, and you guys have found yourself with a little bit of spending money and you want to know what to do with it. Well, a couple months ago, I promised you guys I would circle back and give you my true in-depth review on three panels and SLI and whether or not it's right for you. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Multiple panels, SLI, and whether or not it's something you should even consider spending your hard-earned or stolen dollars on, whatever it may be. I won't judge. I won't judge you. Unless there's a reward, I would, I would turn you in like that. All right, first things first, let's talk about the panels. Yes, I do have three cheapy panels. I have never been a panel snob. I've been a hardware snob, never been a panel snob. They're $130 a piece, less than 500 for all three, 1080p, five millisecond response time. Uh, contrast ratio on them is good. Color rendering on them is eh, okay, could be better. That's why sometimes I look really yellow or really funky in my videos because some of the color correction or color accuracy of these TN panels are not great. Now, with that said, you guys use whatever panels you freaking want to use I don't care I don't care I'm not a panel snob in fact you guys could tell me that you you're using some no-name Korean brand and no I'm not talking about Ben Q I wouldn't even care because my god honest opinion is use whatever works for you now with that said let's go ahead and talk about my experience on games and how I really feel about the experience I've created for myself here in this beast especially since I'm getting ready to move this all in to project skunk works or whatever it's going to be called and I've been highly debating putting my third 780 in here taking it out of the test rig putting one of these graphics cards up here in the test rig and going with three-way SLI then I got to thinking, you know, that's probably quite a bit overkill. Now, the way I see it, there are all types of gamers out there, but they pretty much fall into three categories as far as I see it. You've got your, your FPS shooter gamer, your simulator gamer, and your MMO gamer. Now, there's a lot of other types of gamers out there, strategy games, card games, side scrollers, and all that sort of stuff. For the most part, this video probably isn't even going to pertain to you. But let's go ahead and address these three types of gamers and whether or not this setup even makes sense for you. Now, we'll go ahead and talk about the FPS gamer. Clearly, I've got Battlefield 4 running behind me. Now, FPS shooters, I'm going to tell you right now, and I knew this going in, these games do not benefit whatsoever from having three panels. If anything, it hurts you in the long run, in the short run, in the mid run, and the moment you start playing. Yeah, it's pretty, it's beautiful, it's a wow factor. Your friends walk in and go, wow, you've got, that is so cool. But then people start playing it and they, you, you let them sit down, they start playing and they go, this is weird, this is really weird. Many other shooters, not just this franchise, they're kind of tricking you. They make you think you're getting three full panels of rendered gameplay, but they're not. They're not giving you three panels of rendered gameplay, they're giving you two panels stretched over three. What happens is the side monitors start to look really stretched out from about halfway across the panel. So what they've really done is they've rendered the center, pa center panel and half of each of the side panels and then taken that half and just stretched it across the entire screen. So the side sc of the monitor or the side of the field of view, no matter how you adjust the field of view all the way up or all the way down, I've played with it. You know, that was kind of cool. I need a 3D camera so I can start just like throwing things. All right, back on topic here. It screws with your vision. It screws with your hand-eye coordination. It screws you with your, it screws, blah, 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 blah. it screws with your visual acuity. You have a harder time picking out targets. You have a harder time identifying your target. And you have to learn your hand-eye coordination all over again because your, your brain, if you've been playing first-person shooters long enough, your brain, your hand, your mouse, they're all in tune. And you know you only have to move the mouse two inches, three inches, whatever, to go in any particular part of the screen. Our human brains are freaking awesome. We can calculate in just microseconds how far we have to move our hand to move a little cursor on a screen to hit a certain pixel. You start adding all this extra real estate, your brain doesn't know what to do. So you start aiming all over the place. Okay, you start to adjust to that. But what happens is your reaction time is still crap because you're no longer scanning a 16 by nine area of pixels that's focused right in front of you. So you're kind of tunnel visioning, visioning tunnel, tunnel vision. I'm, guys, I promise I haven't been drinking much. I didn't have a liquid lunch. So your brain is used to focusing on this one panel and getting everything kind of calculated. Now your brain is having to deal with movement in the peripheral. And so it sees movement, your brain wants to look. What is that? 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 And you're looking all over the place. 
And if you're on the ground shooting like this guy behind me here, that can really, really screw with you. If you're in a vehicle, it's kind of nice because in, in jets and in tanks and all that, you've got a wide field of view. And let's face it, the game narrows your view down. So when you go external view and you can see everywhere around you, it's kind of fun. But if you're the kind of gamer that likes to be on the ground, this is only going to hurt your reaction time. My gamer score in Battlefield 4 went from 260s all the way down to 150. And that I'm attributing it to the panels and the envy surround 100%. This is a wow factor. This is eye candy. It is not competitive. And if you take shooters seriously, you need to skip Envy Surround. You need to skip three panels and you need to go with like a 1440p or 1600p if you want ultra high resolution or you just want the, the, the best looking panel that you can skip three panels, please. I just did you a favor. Take that money and divert it into a singular like 27 inch uh, 1440p, a BenQ, something like that. Forget this behind me. But if you're a simulator gamer, oh, oh baby, it's a whole different ball of wax. Simulators highly benefit from that wide viewing angle. When I'm doing eye racing and I can see out my left window and I can see out across my hood and I can see everything happening in front of me as well as a massively wide field of view, it is invaluable when it comes to racing. And I've got friends who have been telling me I cannot wait to get multiple panels because that's where it benefits. Now, if you're a flight simulator, uh, it's the same exact thing. You pretty much are seeing from super wide viewing angles, more like real life. I mean, we have peripherals. We can use those peripherals. And in racing games and simulator games, racing games, simulator games, I am really slurring my words today. Jeez. In racing games and simulator games, it's okay to use your peripheral and just kind of scan motion without having to move your eyes like a shooter game. It's actually more realistic that way. Now, the other type of gamer, MMO gamers. Uh, yeah. I guess you could sort of benefit from it, like Diablo 3, not really an MMO, but Diablo 3, World of Warcraft, or um, what, EverQuest, I guess EverQuest Next or whatever it's called. You got EVE Online and all that kind of stuff. If you, the other panels are nice, but most of all you're looking at is terrain. There's nothing happening over there because the game is designed to pretty much be happening in the center of your viewing range. So, eh. That's kind of what I feel about it. I mean, it's really up to you. I can't say it would or wouldn't benefit you. I mean, it could be nice if you're if you're looking for that one mob or you're looking for that NPC and, and you can't find them. And instead of having to look around that one little panel, if you can see way wide, like Diablo 3, it really comes in handy looking for loot and treasure and, and things like that and enemies. It really comes in handy, especially in World of Warcraft. If you zoom out real far, you have like a massive viewing range. So, but it also depends on the optimization of the games as well. Not all games are optimized for NV Surround or iFinity. It's up to the developer of a graphics card to get those drivers running optimized for that. Some games are not. Battlefield franchise? Pfft, I don't feel it's optimized for it whatsoever. You've got to get rid of that stretching. You can see it right here on this, to the left of me. Let's watch as this guy turns. Look right here where my hand is. Don't focus over here. Focus right here. Do you see how right there it's all stretched? You're really only rendering to about right here and then it stretches. So as you're running, you'll see things look like they're coming in slow and then they whoosh, they whoosh by you. That really screws with you. Eye racing. I don't think I could ever race on a single panel. Now, the last thing to discuss here is SLI configs. Yes, if you're gonna be running multiple panels like this, SLI Crossfire it is pretty much gonna be required. Even a Titan Black Edition or a regular Titan, yeah, they have high amounts of VRAM, but they're not gonna have enough processing power in the GPU to render out all three screens and still have acceptable frame rates. Now, the cool thing is on Battlefield 4 with two GTX 780s, which now you can find used for $400 a piece, obviously, you're talking $800 in graphics cards. I'm getting over 120 to 130 frames per second in Battlefield 4 in ultra settings with MSAA on, but I am capping out my VRAM, the three gigabyte uh, VRAM cards. I am capping them out, but I'm not getting any ill effects. I'm not getting any crashing, any blue screens. But that's all just a myth. That crap doesn't really happen when you cap out your VRAM. It just, when you cap out your VRAM, you don't get any additional frames beyond that. And you don't get any horrible frame latency. My frame uh, timing is, when I monitor frame timing, is pretty consistent. So that's all just a myth. Maybe we'll handle that in another video. So here are my final recommendations. Maybe you skip forward to this part and you're hoping Jay just Give it to us flat out. We don't care about all the background stuff. Just tell us what to do, PC guru. No, I'm just kidding. I, I don't. I, I really don't know anything about computers. If you're an FPS gamer, ditch the other two panels. Get yourself a really good 1080p or 1440p panel. Skip 1200p. That's not a standard 16 by 9 ratio anyway. 1080p, 1440p. 
uh, 1600p, I still recommend two cards. If you are a simulator driver, racer, flyer, whatever, oh baby, three panels, you got to go with three panels. I, I'm telling you, it is such an immersive uh, environment. In fact, maybe you could have three panels like Mr. Barnacles, three 46 inch screens, and you feel like the game is just flying right out at you. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, if you are an MMO gamer, it's really up to you. It may, it's not going to be beneficial for you ultimately in the long run. But then again, games like World of Warcraft, they're not very visually enhanced or very, very intensive anyway. So it's probably not going to be too much of a problem. Now, guys, I don't regret doing this. Like I said, I even thought about putting my third 780 in there, but I'm gonna leave it with two and three panels. And uh, no, I don't plan on going to 1440p or 1600 or 4K anytime soon whatsoever. It'll be at least, at least two more generations before I even consider a 4K panel. So I hope this video has helped you guys. I know it's a little bit more discussion based, not a whole lot of tech information in here, but these are just my opinions. Hopefully they'll help you make a decision on what you should do with your rigs. Now I sincerely wanna thank you guys for all your views and all of your support. The channel growth has been amazing. I am deeply indebted to you guys. You guys make this all worthwhile and fun. If you guys wanna chat with me, the link to Facebook and Twitter is down in the description. I love interacting with you guys there. It's the easiest places to get a hold of me for the most part. There's a, lo a lot of messages, guys. I'm trying, to get, I'm trying to get to them all, but I'm only one guy doing this part time. But anyway, if you guys want to chat with me, the links are down in that description. You got to open it. You got to click it. It opens up. Some of you guys, I don't think, knew that. You got to click the little arrow. It opens up. There's all kinds of stuff down there, like the affiliate links for Amazon, some direct support links if you guys want to support through PayPal, and as well as our sponsor links. And you guys can actually save some money because I've worked out some deals for you guys with Cooler Master and AquaTuning. So with that said, guys, I hope you guys uh, come and hang out on some social media. And as always, I will see you in the next one.